Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And I'm here today to give you a little bit of maybe a tip or a trick that might help you if you have a poodle, a doodle, uh, a Bichon, uh, some kind of dog that has this curly kind of scissored coat texture or really kind of any coat texture, even double coated dogs, drop coated dogs obviously fit into all of these categories. And you're maybe grooming your dog at home, but more likely you're taking your dog to the groomer and you're trying to do your homework, right? And you know, your groomer is like, this dog is mad and I need to shave it right off. And you don't want that to happen, right? You got this breed because you want them to have this big, fluffy, you know, hairdo. So I'm gonna kind of give you my hair do's and my hair don'ts. So what happens is you're brushing your dog every day and you say that to your groomer and your groomer just like huffs and puffs. Well, I'm gonna just say I think everybody's right in this situation because first of all, what happens is you probably are grooming your dog every day or brushing it every day, but most likely you're using the wrong kind of brush and also spending your time in the wrong areas, right? So we have different kinds of dog brushes. We have like a bristle brush and they can look different, but they all kind of have some kind of either man-made or natural bristle to it. And we could have a pin brush and we see a lot of these pin brushes, some of them have balls on the end, but no matter how big, small, or what color a pin brush is, all pin brushes have straight pins when we look at the pins. And then we also have what we call a slicker brush. Now a slicker brush, they can also be in many shapes, big, small, in between, and many different colors and many different pin lengths. But one thing about slickers, they're all gonna have this bent pin. So if you have a dog and you're using a bristle brush or a pin brush, then that's the first problem. The first problem, both of these brushes are kind of useless for what you're doing. Now, obviously for a smooth coated dog, a bristle brush is fantastic, but anything other than that, they're not really that great. And a pin brush does have its time and its place, but for kind of regular maintenance grooming to keep your dog dematted, it's not the time nor the place. So this is when we really want you to use a slicker brush. So problem A, maybe wrong brush. So problem B is you're probably brushing your dog here, right? Like all these super easy to reach areas that also like they make your dog look fluffy. Like look how fluffy she looks rather quickly, right? So first of all, we're not getting down to the skin. And secondly, this isn't the area that mats. We need to get to these high friction areas. So maybe under a harness, under a collar, behind the ears is a really good one. And in the armpits is an excellent one. And down the backs or the sides of the back legs is also where there's more matting. You know, from walking, they get water and debris up in there. They're laying down on it, you know, getting friction mats that way. So if you only have 10 minutes a day to brush your dog or maybe even less or even 15 minutes before they go to the groomer, I urge you not to groom this part. I urge you to groom the parts that nobody's gonna see but your groomer. So that's an armpit. And you just wanna take a slicker brush and you just kind of wanna go in there and you wanna take these, you don't wanna do these big strokes because again, you're just kind of rumbling over the surface. You need to get down to the root so you need to like take your slicker brush and you need to get in here into the armpits and really just take little sections and make sure that you can always see a little bit of skin. You don't wanna just go over the top because that still leaves mats at the skin and that means your groomer is going to have to shave your dog. So I'm giving you these tips to try to avoid the shave. So you really wanna get in there and get down to the skin. Another good way to get down to the skin is to maybe have a comb that has a little bit of a tail on it and you can part the hair and you can like break it apart until you see the skin, you can see the white of her skin and then use your slicker brush to really get that matted area out. So that's just a little quick overview and we invite you to see some of our other tutorials on how to properly line brush your dog where we will show you how to use a tool like this properly to really maintain the life between grooms. And so you never have to say to your groomer, but I brush them every day and have your groomer not believe you. So just a little recap, always try to go to those high friction areas first and if you already have a brush, take a look at it and try to make sure you get yourself a slicker brush that has bent pins, all right? So I hope that helps. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much.
Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon. Bye.